Pokemon. Hello, Hello, friends. Friends game. So you want to make a tower defense based game? Well, hello, my fellow gnomes. You have come to the right place. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a little basic pathway for our enemies to move down. So starting in a blank base plate and we're just going to add in a part. And there we go. That will do as our basic course. And now all we need is a monster to walk down it. So you can use anything really, but uh, I'm just going to go open the toolbox and I'm probably just going to go and grab a zombie, the classic monster. And we'll select this one here. Um, it's got the, the approved badge here. We can see it's made by Roblox himself. So we'll add this one in, the drooling zombie. We get a message, it includes some scripts. Pretty uh, new feature there. We don't mind about that. Press OK. But we don't actually want any of the scripts inside of it. So if we open it up, you can see it's got animate script and so on. We can delete that. Uh, we can delete this audio clip, this script, this billboard GUI, these configurations and modules, delete both of them. Um, but if we look inside animations, there's this thing called arms. We do want to keep that. Uh, that's actually the walk animation. So we'll just rename this to walk. But uh, we'll, we can delete the attack animation. But we'll keep this walk one for now. Uh, these ones, they like, look like animations, but these are actually uh, mesh parts. So don't delete them because if you delete them, you're going to end up with a rather blocky looking character. So don't do that. So now we've got this little guy here. Well, we want to move him from the start of the level here. And we're going to want to move him down to the end of the map, which is all the way over here. So what we could do is we could add in some kind of part like this. We could make this like a waypoint. And then we could, we'll name this one end. And then inside of a script, well, we could just add one straight into the zombie script. And obviously we need to get the zombie, so local zombie in this case was the script dot parent and then we need the humanoid so zombie dot humanoid and we could just say move to workspace dot end dot position but if we do that if we run it what's going to happen is it's just going to head in a straight line right to the destination that is obviously not what we want we want him to go around the path so how can we get him to do that? Well, there's a few ways. We could use something called pathfinding service, um, but then what we need to do is you'd have to put up a load of invisible walls like this. And that's gonna take quite a bit of work to build all these invisible walls, right? It takes time. Um, a kind of quick and easy way we could do is because it's a fixed path, it's never going to change. We can actually just provide a series of waypoints ourselves. Like we provide this one at the end well if we just add one at each turn then it can let him know where to go now before we do that i'm actually going to get all these path pieces and put them into a folder okay so i'm going to create a new folder inside workspace we'll just name this path and then we're going to create another one so I duplicate it and we'll call this one uh waypoints so we move the end into the waypoints folder and we'll move all of these parts make sure they're anchored and drag them into the path folder okay so just keeping things a bit organized as we go and so with our waypoint instead of just having this one named end what we're actually going to do is going to move it back to the start again and this is the first turn he's got to do and to keep track of all of these waypoints we're actually just going to number them okay so as soon as it's the first one we'll just give this a name of one Duplicate it, move it along, and this one will be the second turn. We'll just name this two. I'm going to repeat this one, this process. So this will be three until we've done every point along the map. Okay, so we've now got 12 waypoints all spaced out every turn along the way. Obviously, it's a bit of a hacky solution. But it does mean, seeing as you're only going to have a fairly short fixed path, you can keep track of it very nicely. We're going to select all these parts, make sure they're anchored again, disable collisions because we don't want the zombie to be bumping into them. And while we're here, we'll maybe just make them sort of semi-transparent like so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of these waypoints and tell our zombie here to move to each one. 
So select our zombie again, open up the script, and instead of doing it like this, we need to get the waypoints first of all. So local waypoints equals workspace dot waypoints. And then we're going to need a loop. So we'll use something called a for loop. So for i equals one, or in fact, we could say for waypoint equals one. And then the number we want the loop to go up to, which will be the total amount of waypoints there are. So we can say waypoints get children. This will get us a table of everything inside of it. And then we just want to count how many items are inside of the table. So we just can use a hash. So for waypoint equals one and the total do, and then we create this for loop block. And we're going to want to move the humanoid, move the zombies humanoid to, instead of just saying a fixed workspace dot end, we want to get the waypoints. And then what we do is inside brackets, square brackets, we designate which one we want to move it to. In this case, it is the waypoint variable, this local variable we've created. So on the first leap through, it will equal one. And we're saying, go to the waypoints folder and find waypoint number one, which is going to be this one right here. On the second loop through, when it comes back around again, it's going to increase it by two, increment it, and it's going to be equal to two then. And so then it'll go to waypoint number two. And it'll increment up to by one each time. So then three, four, five, six, seven, until it gets till 12, which is our final waypoint. Now we want to make sure he reaches each one before he tries to walk to the next one. So we'll say zombie.humanoid.move to finished. And we'll just add in a colon wait to ensure he waits each time. So now we've got our zombie controller script sorted. Let's run that and see if we can get him moving. We we'll give it a run. And oh, we've got a problem there because I've just put the, uh, there we go. You can see my error down in the output. I've just specified the part, whereas move to needs to specify a position. So I put dot position and there we go, we fix it. That's why I should always have the output open while you're scripting. We try that again and there we go. He moves to the first waypoint and then straight on to the second waypoint and he'll keep going until he reaches the very end. And there he goes, and he finishes the loop. So now we've got our zombie moving along the course, but we've still got a lot to do next. So join me for the next video so we can actually get some wave-based attacks going. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!